Hi, welcome to Real Madrid Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is very late in coming, but it's Blackpool Day 3. Before we do this very briefly, can you please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I go, I go live and uh, check out onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site that's been going 10 years and it's still going and it's going to keep going as long as I can do it there. Uh, but check out what people are saying about it. Loads of testimonials on there. Don't take my word for it. I'm biased. This is, so this is a funny one because I, I, I was going to record this on the, I usually record the last day as soon as I get home, but I got home and I got really sick for about two days. I'm not that well now. You can see my throat's still really sore. Um, not really surprising with a uh, thousand of people that squeezed into a the one space, but there you go. Well worth it, I reckon. But I'm recording this as live, so it's going to be still as I've been doing them all in one go. So it's going to be very rambly. I will definitely be doing more detailed videos on some of my highlights and definitely the things I brought back with me. So even before I review them, I'll kind of talk about that because people are talking about what was the trick of the weekend and all that kind of stuff. And I'll do all that, but this is just a really rambly kind of like the others summary. And I didn't, like day one, I, I didn't get to see loads because I wanted, I realised I hadn't spent hardly any time in the dealers. And the dealers isn't, of course, just about seeing the new tricks. It's about seeing performances and, and being entertained. It's not about just about buying stuff. That's what I was meant to say. And I actually spent a good three hours in there just watching Magic Tricks, being entertained by Magic Tricks, and realised that it's been quite a long time since that's happened. And, every, you know, people are saying, what's your trick of the, of the week? I don't think I've got one. There was just loads of really good stuff, and I just kind of let it wash over me and enjoyed it. And caught up with loads of people. You know, that's the room where you catch up with loads of friends and meet people, you know, because everywhere else I was kind of on my way to a lecture, on my way to a thing. So... It was really nice to just walk around and kind of see people that I've talked to for so long online doing this thing and um, and, sell, and selling it and demonstrating it. So that was lovely, but you know, enough of that in a different thing. Oh, and I'll be talking about it on the lives as well. The lecture that first lecture, well, I did drop in to Kevin James uh, mega talk. So I, I, I kind of dropped into a, a few things. I'm gonna look at my phone because I'm gonna kind of remind myself. Um, the and what it was it was in the big arena and I, as i said i really like kevin james but somebody did point out to me which i didn't say in the um in the when i reviewed or well, sort of semi-reviewed the kevin james and friends gala show and i said oh, great he was really comforting he's a lovely mc but actually looking back on it and someone pulled me up on this they said look he was kind of reading names off a bit of paper all the time and and I thought, yeah, that's right, actually. I did like that he's relaxed, but sometimes there's almost like a feeling of him being too relaxed. And I'm thinking, hang on, are the, are the, if these is Kevin James's friend, why do you have to read the thing off a bit of paper? Saying that, I, I probably would. But, um, yeah, there was, I did kind of think, yeah, you're right. So there's that. But this was those same people, not all of them, um, chatting about magic and showing some of their stuff and the things they've created. The only thing I really saw was uh, Rafu, who was the one that I said looked like Bill Malone, and he actually uh, acknowledged that, not me saying it's clearly a thing. He says, me, it's not Bill Malone. And he was just going through his his stuff in the same way that Gaten Bloom often does. He goes, we've got this. If you've watched the DVD uh, Bloomeries, he's, it's just kind of manic, and I, I really like that. And it was nice. It was he, he had this kind of vanishing silk into a coat hanger thing. He had uh, his really nice version. Instead of doing silk to egg, doing a coat, silk to coat can, but it's the same trick. So I really enjoyed the bit of that that I saw and then Gaten Bloom came on and was demonstrating one of his tricks which I've seen um, quite a lot anyway so I just kind of thought okay I'll go and watch a bit of the Mike Hammer interview. Now the Mike Hammer interview I only saw a bit but what I didn't mention and a lot of people are talking about this and I don't want to kind of make a stance on it now but what I will say is that he said a couple of things that really went down badly in when he was hosting the gala show the evening before. Now, he is clearly incredibly good at what he does, but he said two things that really kind of got people. One of them 
sounded like a racist joke. Now, he did talk about that the next day. And I know in most cases you go, nobody can, there's no justification. But actually, he said he knew the person. It was kind of like a, I think he said it was kind of like a semi-ironic thing. So, whatever. I mean, I didn't see that bit of the interview. But he acknowledged it as a point. He's clearly not a racist com you know, comedian. He's not one of the, those people where there's kind of that n sort of weird, gnarly intention behind it. It was just, as he admitted, I think someone said to me in the bit of the interview that I missed it, he kind of misjudged it. It was meant to be a kind of just a thing to make everybody go, ooh, and it kind of backfired a little bit. So, but it, and it definitely backfired because it kind of completely switched me off. And I just kind of, nah, I'm done. Um, still, while still acknowledging his skill, and he has got skill as a compare. Now, a lot of people said he didn't in that context. I think he's a great compare. I just think it's, it was not quite for that audience. Anyway, that's a completely different conversation. And he made another quite off-coloured joke, um, which, again, I, I kind of... We can talk about that on a different thing, on the lives, if somebody asked me the question about it. But he kind of lost me a little bit. And as I said on Twitter, I said, you know, he did lose me, and I didn't like him very much. But when I saw his show later on, which, again, I'll, get, I'll talk about in a minute, as a catchphrase. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's Steve Fort, ladies and gentlemen. I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> so <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Uh, so he, he, I kind of completely had an about term with him. So, but his interview was good, you know. I, I, I went and watched it. It was Paul Stone. Is that what he's called? Oh, God, I know him as well. I get, I'm so bad with names, even with people I've known for years. It's not like my mates or anything, but uh, was interviewing on someone once that I know. <laughs> uh, and it was good. He's, he's just eloquent, and he was very honest and very, you know. What I do like it about people like that is that they kind of go no that's what I did so you know I'm going to face up to it I'm not going to sort of apologize and cower down and say it was the wrong thing he did say it was you know it was mis misjudged but I kind of you know I kind of connected with him a lot more and I thought okay you know he's clearly very good and he knows what he's doing uh, and that was good that was good to see and it was good to uh, I was kind of gutted that I didn't get in before and then I went to what I did want to catch was all of Henry Harrius's lecture which is weird because I know all his stuff um but I just felt like I wanted to sit and watch the whole thing. I wanted to, I've seen him lecture for bits. I've seen him lecture before I, I kind of got a lot of his stuff. And I just wanted him to see the, see his performances of things that I already do. And the new thing that he does is a big, the massive eight, things that 8x8 eight eight cube, uh, which is a sort of version of RD360. And Henry's one of those lecturers that I, that I do, for very kind of, it's a weird comparison, a bit like Michael Amar. So I can watch Michael Amar do stuff that I've known for years and just sit back and watch him. He's got, it's not like he's hilarious and it's not like he's just got a very nice manner. And Henry Harris to me is like that. He, he, I like the way he, he is quite funny, you know, but he's not, he's not like a, you know, comedy magician, but he's quite funny to watch and he's quite, he's very charming. And I just really enjoyed sitting, watching him do his magic. And he's, um, and it's still, still, you forget how strong he is, even when you do it, you know, we all do tricks and we forget how good they look. Uh, doing things like RD Insta, RD 360, um, a kind of well version of, of that again with this sort of the big cube, his latest release, and um, and the, the the you know the band stuff he he released. And he's got he had a lovely um, card to box with a gimmick he'd made. He'd handmade them and only a specific number, which is a kind of mystery box um, with a card box. A very very simple idea, but really, I mean, you see that card in the box and he tips it into his hand, and it's. It's great. So I don't know what he's got, whether he's going to release that. I presume he will at some point, but or whether it's just a lecture thing. And Tina Leonard. Now, I went to see Tina Leonard um, do a talk because I loved it at the session. And I went in and I was starting to feel quite ropey. So I, um, I hadn't slept much. And I, it was all really hot and stuff. And I was feeling a bit of it. And I, felt, I, I just thought, I've got to walk around now. So I just had a walk around. I thought that's when I went to the back to the dealers and kind of hang out in there for a bit more. Um, but you know, if you again, if you get a chance to see Tina's talk, it's it's it was a shame because I kind of it's one of those talks that I think everybody should be in that room. Like whatever's going on, everybody go and see that. And of course, people want to see tricks, they want to see magic. So when they see some, that someone's doing a talk, some people want to kind of go and see the magic tricks. And I, I think it's a real shame because it's don't get me wrong, it wasn't empty. There was quite a few people in there, and people were loving it. But it's um, it, it, she's great to see do what she does and that talk like I said inspired me so much before and I you know I only watched a little bit of it it inspired me again and and uh and with a show coming up as I said on one of the last videos that's so important to me at the moment I did feel a bit by that time I was a bit kind of magicked out and I don't mean in a way that I did my theory magic 
because the garlic shells and that were great later. But I didn't, I wasn't that, but I'd seen all the stuff with the dealers, and that's a bit different because I was chatting with people. But to sit and watch tricks and learn tricks, I was kind of like, no, I'll do that now when I get home. And I always feel like that on the last day. I kind of, I'm there going, right, I don't want to learn anything now. I just want to see stuff, enjoy stuff, be fed, you know, nice things, um, nice artistic and, and entertaining things. Uh, and theory, I still quite like that, but I'm kind of, I want to just get home and get to work and start learning the things. So um, by then I was going to write, I'm kind of done now. Let's just hang out and let's get to the uh, shows in the, in the evening. And a full evening of shows it was. I started going to see Tom Brace. I didn't know much about Tom Brace. And he's one of those people that just does a very, very comfortable on stage. Uh, a lot of fun. Very nice. You can tell he's nice. Uh, and that's not a bad thing, by the way. It's very good because he's, he's still very funny. He's got some lovely jokes. It, you know, magic-wise, as he said, you know, he kept... Um, and I think it's a good thing. He kept saying, oh, here I am doing my, you know, show for lay people in front of all the best magicians in the world. And, and he didn't at all look nervous. He didn't look shaken by it. And I could see that show just really storming in a kind of, you know, the environment where it's supposed to be performed. But, you know, and it was a good, it's a good show. Lovely theme, you know, about growing up in the 90s. And even though I grew up in 70s and 80s, uh, it was nice to see all those callbacks and, and be able to relate to all that. And I think it's a really, really nice idea. And the tricks were great. You know, he was taking, it wasn't just a load of, you know, marketed tricks done in his way, which, you know, my show is pretty much. Um, it was, he he created these he lovely thing with a crystal maze. You know, what a great idea. If, if you know the crystal maze in the 90s, at the end of it, they're trying to catch money in this big kind of air tank. Not called that. And he created one with a tent. So he's got all this really creative stuff. Clearly put loads of work into it. And it is a really good show. It's just a weird room again. So again, I was quite near the back because I'm rubbish and I don't like sitting in the front. I feel all trapped get all anxious <laughs> so I always, it's not not the ideal uh, room to watch it in but it's a really good show if you get a chance to watch it and really important for us to see magic shows as magicians you know good solid tight fun well put together edinburgh style magic shows and and i haven't seen enough and so it's you know i came out happy and i thought it was a it was a really good show and i would have been you know if I'd done my show in front of people, it would have been something like, what, well, here we go, what, Venom Cube again, you know, cups and balls. So, you know, really good stuff. So that's Tom Brace. And then, the gala show. Actually, I'm going to stop this video now, and I'm going to do the gala, because this will go on for too long, and it's quite nice not to do it. I don't have to now, because it's not like I have to get it all out. So I'm going to stop here and do the gala show and the next evening show um, and the rest of it on a separate video. So this is um, day three, part one, just to confuse things ridiculously. Come back. You've got to come back and uh, like and subscribe and check out onlinemagic.co before we do that.